So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our distinguished guests, friends and colleagues in the water community worldwide, all protocols observed. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. My name is Anja Grabitsky, and I'm the Deputy Director of External Affairs at the Green Climate Fund. And this is really a wonderful event today with many distinguished speakers um, on the SDG 6 on water. We urgently need to accelerate delivery on SDG 6 in this triple challenge of the pandemic, the economic crisis and the climate crisis. And I think that the, the exciting lineup that we have for you today, the discussion on the acceleration framework and the, what, everything that is being planned for the water decade is going to show how the water community is really coming together to make a step change. There's a tremendous need for more effective, integrated and coordinated actions, coupled with a political will to invest in, in water solutions. And I think what we're going to hear and uh, see today um, is really going to show that this is now beginning to happen. The ball is rolling. So just before the event starts, some logistical points. Please do note that for the event today, we have both a chat box and a question and answer box. And our colleagues will monitor and attempt to answer your questions. Um, in the chat and also we will be picking up some of the questions in the moderation of this event. The event is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the UN webcast um, and you'll be able to find all the information about that on the UN Water website. So without further ado, I'd like to now introduce um, my first um, co-chair and I have the great honor now to introduce Mr. Liu Zhenmin, who's the UN Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. And Mr. Liu is appointed as the Conference Secretary General for the 2023 UN Conference on Water, which we'll be talking about later. So Mr. Liu, thank you very much for joining us today. And over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ania, for moderating this uh, special event. Uh, good morning, good, good afternoon, and good evening to all colleagues around the world. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished colleagues and partners, and ladies and gentlemen, I join my friend and my colleague, uh, Mr. Gilbert Humber, the UN Water Chair, in welcoming you all to this special event, SDG 6, convened on the margins of the High Level Political Forum. A year ago, the UN Water family launched the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework to speed up the delivery of SDG 6 and strengthen system-wide collaboration at the country level. The framework promotes shared accountability among all actors. The SDG 6 special event in the margins of the high level political forum is the annual high level and multi stakeholder moment to discuss water and sanitation related issues. It brings together all actors to review progress, reflect, learn, and initiate actions that are focused on achieving this goal. I look forward to hearing from all colleagues and partners today on progress made on the projects that have been developed around the framework. This is a key opportunity to share the agenda in support of SDG 6 as we move towards the 2023 United Nations Water Conference, Water Decade Conference and beyond. We can use this event to keep the momentum going, going by drawing commitments and a high level support from different stakeholders, including member states, 
civil society and the private sector. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in line with the theme of the 2021 high-level political forum, today's event will focus on how the SD6 Goal Acceleration Framework can support a sustainable and resilient recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Water and sanitation related solutions should be prioritized within COVID-19 recovery plans. As they are critical and not only for better preparations and the resilience for future crises, but also for achieving our economic, social, and the environmental goals. Dear colleagues, together, we will be able to make a difference and UNDESA will stand ready to support you in this effort. I thank you. Ania, floor is back to you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Liu. And we look forward to hearing from you again a, a little bit later in this discussion. Um, to talk in more detail about the 2023 conference. But now it's my great honor to introduce Mr. Gilbert Umbo, who is, of course, the chair of UN Water, and he is also the president of IFAD, the International Fund on Agricultural Development. So welcome, Mr. President, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, and thank you for accepting to, to, to chair um, this session. Uh, Dear Ania, um, let me start also by joining uh, Ambassador um, Liu uh, in welcoming uh, um, all of you. He says it uh, um, all. For me, it's quite uh, um, uh, an honor on behalf of the, um, the, the UN Water to, to co-chair this special event uh, in this high level uh, um, forum. This uh, meeting uh, marks the, another important step in our journey to 2023, uh, when we will all convene for the, uh, the midterm review of the International Decade for, um, for, um, for Action. So to, today, we will update you on our progress and talk about a crucial uh, new initiative on capacity devel uh, and development that uh, Ambassador Liu and certain uh, referred to. Um, water sanitation and hygiene services and a well-managed water cycle, they are a first, at the first line of defense against many pathogens uh, as we know it, and can help us overcome shocks, particularly from disease and climate change. Yet, we need to say it again, billions of people still live without this protection, this basic protection. And the spread of COVID-19 has highlighted uh, many inequalities, including the divide between those who have access to safe water and the sanitation and the billions um, who do not. Uh, if anyone um, did not previously understand the fundamental connection we, 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 we see between water sanitation um, to our health and security, then now they do. So last year, uh, UN Water's uh, uh, Integrated Monitoring Initiative for SDG 6, um, we worked um, with more countries uh, to gather more data, providing uh, additional evidence to guide our effort. While there is uh, some good news, um, namely the SDG 6 um, progress report clearly shows um, how far off track we still are. And this is not a criticism per se of the quality of our work, but we clearly need to do more. And we also need to do it faster. A year after the launch of the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework, uh, I'm glad to be able to tell you that we are rapidly um, accelerating. We are quite very, very happy about the progress. Um, several excellent uh, initiatives uh, by UN Water members and, and partners are already uh, underway. Uh, two good examples are the, the, the Water and Climate Coalition uh, led by WMO, uh, the Hand uh, Hygiene Initiative uh, uh, led by uh, UNICEF uh, uh, and, uh, and WHO. 
Uh, also, and uh, Ambassador Liu, you uh, just mentioned that as well. Um, UN DESA and UNESCO will share progress uh, on the SDG6 uh, capacity development uh, uh, initiative, which aims to give countries more comprehensive uh, um, support. In addition to the global acceleration framework um, being recognized in intergovernmental processes, such as the Human Rights Council and the, G uh, the General Assembly resolutions, the, the, the framework was also used as the organizing structure for the, um, for the panel sessions uh, at the high level meeting on water uh, convened by the president of the GA um, in March, a uh, um, few months ago. So colleagues, we know what we have to do. And yes, we are doing it, but we know that we must work up to four times faster to meet SDG 6. Uh, and we are trying to acceleration, uh, accelerate our determination to do so. The pandemic with its global reach has galvanized us all. And we can meet the SDG 6. I still think we can do it. We will, if we, we continue working the way we are, and if we are accelerating our efforts, we will help protect billions of women children and men from diseases and help the foundations for a safer and fairer world. Thank you so much. Back to, uh, back to you, Ania. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for those inspiring words on the urgent need to accelerate delivery of SDG 6. And we'll be hearing more about the details of that acceleration and how that is actually happening and being done right now, um, later on in the program. Now, um, it's time for our first video. And we have the honor of having a video from His Excellency, Mr. Volkan Boschkir, the president of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly. And I understand that the president of the General Assembly organized a meeting in March to discuss the urgency of accelerating WASH. Um, and here we are to listen to his words to us today. Mr. Zen Min Liu, Under Secretary General for the United Nations, uh, Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Mr. Gilbert Hanbo, Chair of UN Water and President of International Fund for Agriculture and Development. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address today's special side event on SDG 6. I commend both UN Water and the Department of Economic and Social Affairs for organizing today's discussion and for their unwavering commitment to water and sanitation for all. This discussion is sadly necessary. With more than half of the world's population continuing to lack access to proper sanitation, and with a third of the population lacking access to safe drinking water, we are not only behind on targets, that would be too institutional an, an assessment, we are failing our responsibilities to our fellow human beings. As I said during the high-level meeting on water in March, it is a moral failure that we live in a world with such high levels of technical innovation and success, but we continue to allow billions of people to exist without clean drinking water or the basic tools to wash their hands. And make no mistake, this is a global failure that has far-reaching implications for all of us. Dear colleagues, I was encouraged by member state statements and discussions during the high reach SDG 6 by 2030 through an additional uh, $1.7 trillion, three times more than the current level of investment. Second, to strengthen efforts to adapt to climate change and to improve disaster risk reduction, particularly as it relates to drought, floods, and other water-related disasters and impacts. Third, to build and expand partnerships for sustainable water and sanitation management at all levels and make every effort to include the private sector, rural communities, indigenous groups, and youth. 
Strengthened partnerships are particularly needed in the areas of capacity building, technology transfer, knowledge sharing and innovation. Fourth, the need to strengthen UN water as a coordinating me mechanism so as to further improve UN support for the achievement of water-related goals and targets. And finally, to continue to seek and scale up innovative solutions backed by science that can help solve global water challenges. Increased awareness of water issues and highly quality data are key for informed and evidence-based decision-making among stakeholders. This includes the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework, which provides the UN system, governments, civil society, and the private sector a useful tool for assessment and support. Dear colleagues, it took a global pandemic for us to wake up for the reality that billions of people lacked basic hand-washing facilities. Let us not wait until the next global crisis to acknowledge this failure. Let us act now to close the gap. I call on all member states and UN partners to redouble efforts to reach the resources required and to provide much needed capacity support. As we look to the conference on midterm review of the decade of action in 2023, let us aim for demonstrable evidence of progress. While we cannot guarantee access to clean water and sanitation for all in such a short timeline, we can surely expect progress. We can expect and demand that fewer people are going without. Let us aim for this intermediate goal. Thank you. Mr. Zenmin Liu on the so it's really very inspiring to have that level of support from the president of the General Assembly himself. And now, most appropriately, we have a video from Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization. Your Excellency, Mr. Volkan Bozkir, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Mr. Gilbert Hongwo, Chair of the UN Water and President of the International Fund for Agriculture Development, Mr. Liu Zemin, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends. Clean water and sanitation are cornerstones of public health. Yet, a quarter of people cannot access safe drinking water in their homes, and nearly half lack well-managed sanitation. COVID-19 has underscored how essential wash services are for living healthy lives. And yet, at the onset of the pandemic, a third of people around the globe could not wash their hands with soap and water from home. Unless urgent action is taken, the scale of this problem will only grow. According to new data from WHO and UNICEF, by 2030, 1.6 billion people will be without safe water, 2.8 billion without safe sanitation, and 1.9 billion without basic hand washing facilities. This will severely hamper efforts to tackle infectious diseases, build a healthier world, and achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. As part of the SDG Global Acceleration Framework, WHO is working with partners to improve WASH services worldwide. But getting there requires dedicated investment over the long term. We must redouble our efforts to mobilize governments, UN agencies, civil society, and the private sector to make hygiene, sanitation, and safe water a daily reality for every person everywhere. I thank you.
so it's really wonderful to to hear that call for increased financing increased levels of public participation but now, now let's tackle the first area in which we're going to have a deep dive into this acceleration framework today um, which is on the capacity development initiative it's one of the key accelerator areas of the global acceleration framework it's absolutely essential for country ownership for people on the ground to be getting increasingly involved um, in the delivery of water supply and sanitation. And so under the leadership of UNDESA and UNESCO, UN Water has established this capacity development initiative in March this year. So today we'll hear about progress on this initiative um, from the co-coordinators, as well as from a country representative. And um, first of all, I'd like to now invite back Mr. Liu Zhenmin, the UN Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, who is one of the co-coordinators of this initiative. Please, Mr. Liu, back to you again. Thank you, Ania. Uh, dear colleagues and partners, um, let me share a few thoughts on what we have achieved on uh, this uh, capacity development initiative over the past year. Uh, last year, UNDESA made three broad commitments to the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework. Number one, we commit to supporting the SDG 6 action space through the SDG Acceleration Action Platform. There are now over 170 commitments re registered. Number two, we're committed to providing today's platform for sharing and review of progress through the annual high-level and multi-stakeholder high-level uh, special event on the margins of the high-level political forum. Third, we're committed to increasing our capacity development work on SDG 6. We have made considerable progress since then. We have been working with the UN Water members and the partners to include capacity development into the offer to UN resident coordinators and country teams to better support member states in their efforts to implement SDG 6. In March of this year, uh, the 2021, the C Capacity Development Initiative, this is a new project, was established as a UN Water Initiative. This Capacity Development Project elevated the UN Water Initiative within the UN system and its partners as a one of the priority actions to directly support the capacity development accelerator of ITG6 global acceleration framework. Dear colleagues, the SDG6 capacity development initiative will now serve as a UN interagency coordination mechanism on freshwater and sanitation related capacity development work. This will enable us to deliver as one on SDG 6 together with our multi-stakeholder partners. Through the resident coordinator system and in line with the UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework in countries, this initiative will be based on the UN common country analysis, national development plans, as well as other analytical inputs from across UN Water and other country partners. With national governments in a driver's seat, through a well-targeted and coordinated support, we hope to increase capacities at the country level to open bottlenecks that hamper accelerated implementation of water and sanitation related goals and targets of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The initiative will be co coordinated by UNDESA and UNESCO jointly. And we have received interest from over 20 members of the UN Water who wish to collaborate on this initiative. We stand ready to engage with the interest parties. Working with the governments and the support of donors we hope to see quick action and implementation of initiative and make the real impact on the ground. 
I need, uh, let me take uh, this opportunity also say a few words on, uh, on the 2023 conference. As the President of the General Assembly has mentioned, uh, the Assembly has decided to come in uh, the 2023 UN Water Conference as a midterm review event. Uh, this will be a member state dri driving process. Uh, I think it'll be co the conference will be co-hosted by, by the government Netherlands and the Tajikistan. So these two governments are already approaching us for preparation. So from now until the conference be convened in 2023, there's a remains about less than three years, two years for us to prepare for that. We noticed over the past months that be, there's a great interest from a number of governments, I think including Germany, including Netherlands, including Tajikistan, a number of governments have already started to, to engage with us. So we also say that a number of high level panels has been also engaged in this process. We're looking forward to, to the good support of the UN Water and our partners from the UN system for this event. So now I would like to pass the floor to my colleague, uh, the, the, the Director General of UNESCO, Audrey Ozalei, with whom I'm proud to have joined efforts to accelerate progress on SDGs. So, Ania, first back to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Liu. And as UNESCO is the co-coordinator of this vital initiative on capacity development, we now have a video from Ms. Audrey Ozule, who's the Director General. Excellencies, dear colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, since the first microorganism appeared some 3.8 billion years ago, the life cycle has been inextricably linked to the water cycle. This liquid gold, after, our, after which our blue planet is named, makes up for 60% of our bodies and is the first common good of humanity. Because water is not only the building block of life, it is also a total social fact. It is not just a matter of health and hygiene, as the pandemic reminds us daily, but it is also a matter of education, for instance. How can we learn without access to drinking water? Every year, 443 million school days are lost due to diseases linked to poor water quality. Lastly, something we often forget is that water is also a matter of gender equality. According to the World Water Development Report, uh, published by UNESCO last March on behalf of the whole UN water family, women spend 200 million hours per day collecting water, lost time that men can spend on education, information, entertainment. Yet, water is becoming an increasingly fragile common good. As our most recent report shows, if we do nothing, we may lack 40% of the water we need by 2030, 40%. When the world lacks water, all of humanity trembles. This is why ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all is more than just a mere goal. It is a necessity if we are to realize this fundamental right. And I am delighted that the UN water family has relied around this crucial objective. The mechanism we will be discussing today and which we are uh, happy to be coordinating with the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, will allow us to act more efficiently in realizing these shared goals. And it is extremely important because it is a mechanism for coordination and also a mechanism for action. It will enable us to strengthen our action on a deci decisive issue that I would like to discuss uh, further with you today. This issue central to the first United Nations Water Conference uh, that took place in Mar del Plata in 1977 is education. It is decisive because, uh, to quote uh, uh, the words of Captain Jacques-Yves Cousteau, people love what amazes them and people protect what they love. And this is why UNESCO has called on its 193 member states to make uh, the environment and water a core curriculum component by 2025. This quest for knowledge is only just beginning. 
and the mechanism that we are uh, discussing today can help us on our way. In particular, it will allow the 169 national committees in UNESCO's Intergovernmental Hydrological Programme, as well as the 36 UNESCO centres and the 65 uh, university chairs on water, to collect training and education resources and make them more available to member states. It will also allow us to promote open science as we see it as UNESCO with a recommendation that we are currently preparing on this issue. In addition, our intergovernmental hydrological program is developing an initiative to better measure progress in water education in countries around the world and especially in higher education. These new projects will build on our existing initiatives which last year allowed us to train 30,000 people, mostly women, in 129 countries. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the American astronaut Ron Garan describes Earth as a fragile oasis. For satellite images are misleading. While this blue liquid covers two thirds of the planet, only 1% of it is safe to drink. Our very survival depends on this 1% and it depends on us. Our common behavior, uh, our lifestyles, our consumption habits, our commitment to it. So let's commit together to protecting this blue gold that is so essential to humanity. I thank you. Well, it was really wonderful that Audrey Azoulay has brought in the gender dimension of the importance of, of empowering women with water education, water knowledge um, and capacity building in this initiative. Now we have a video statement from another water wise woman, Her Excellency, Ms. Teresa Ribera Rodriguez, who is a fourth vice president of the government of Spain and also the minister for ecological transition and the demographic challenge. In 2015, we adopted the Sustainable Development Goals and the Agenda for Sustainable Development, which uh, includes SDG 6, the one dealing with ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation of law. We have done lots of things since that moment, but there is still much to do. Unfortunately, according to the Sustainable Development Report 2020, we have still many people who cannot accept to a safety managed drinking water and sanitation. There is still lots of things to be done. There are more than 785 million persons without basic drinking water and 2 billion who were without basic sanitation. COVID-19 and its unprecedented economic and welfare impacts show to what extent we need to invest in our future, to what extent we need to ensure our capacities to provide good services but also healthy water to anyone in the world. According to the latest UN report, the current rate of progress on achieving the SDGs has decreased due to the fact of this uh, pandemics. The water and sanitation for all will have to quadruple to meet the 2030 deadline. In this context, implementation of the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework launched by UN Water in July 2020 is a crucial element for the achievement of this agenda by 2030. And no doubt, capacity development in the foundation, capacity to absorb the available funding is very important in any region, in any country, in any society. We are happy to see to what extent UNESCO has been designated by UN Water as a coordinator that can help to provide these services and these capacity building needs so that the implementation of the Agenda 2030 will not be missed by that deadline but will not all neither miss because of the lack of capacities in some of the local institutions. Building a water governance whereby decisions are made based on science is absolutely key. And as you know, water management in Spain has always been a very critical issue. We have invested lots of uh, years in order to facilitate um, an updated way to deal with this problem. We know that the availability of our water resources, the scarcity, the menaces of climate change will be modeling our response in the water planification exercise that we are 
facing right now. Perhaps due to these um, limitations, we have been learning on how to develop uh, some services, some industrial investments to facilitate the reutilization, the desalation, and the sanitation together with the efficiency in the use of water. We have also developed cutting edge technologies, for example, in the fields of real time flood management or seawater desalination. The ministry that I chair is fully engaged to the achievement of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and very much in particular those dealing with access to water. A rational in that capacity building must be based on four fundamental pillars. First, to promote efficient use of water in order to reduce the risk of water stress. Second, to improve the conservation of aquatic ecosystems by setting ambitious and affordable environmental objectives. Third, to promote sustainability, infrastructure resilience and the use of nature-based solutions to solve all those problems that can be solved by these means. And fourth, to promote an integrated water resource management as a basic governance framework to achieve water security. We have uh, developed some experience with some of our colleagues in other regions, in other countries. For instance, through the Conference of Inter-American Water Directors, of which we are permanent technical secretariat and we're in collaboration with UNESCO and UNESCO. Uh, we have implemented a very ambitious training program for all uh, those countries in Latin America that were willing, were willing to join this exercise. Only for 2021 and 2022, the program is going to support more than 2,000 courses and capacity building events in different countries of the region. Dear members of the Water family, this is a critical issue for hope, for prosperity, for humankind, for wealth and development. So, count on us, count on Spain. We feel committed, we know, we have experience what water stress means, what the risk of floods, the risk of water scarcity may mean in any local community, may mean in any economic sector, may mean in terms of human security. Thanks. In 2015, we adopted we're very grateful to the government of Spain for um, and to Ms. Rodriguez for sharing this video with us. Um, now we're moving into a very exciting part of the program where we will hear from a number of key stakeholders and from the youth about how they are supporting various aspects of the Global Acceleration Framework for SDG 6. And it's my great pleasure to hand over to Carolina McKinnon, who is the president of the World Youth Parliament of Water. Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anya. I'm happy to be here today to moderate this session where we'll learn more about how UN members and partners, the private sector and youth organizations are all rallying around SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework. As Anya mentioned, my name is Carolina and I'm the president of the World Youth Parliament for Water, an international youth governed network with members from over 80 countries. We work together to ensure that youth have a valued and respected voice along with influence upon decisions made by senior water management officials. I, like many other youths, am passionate about making positive change in the water sector. And I'm so honored to be able to be a part of this session. Thank you to our speakers. We are thrilled to be able to hear so many diverse voices today. However, we also have a schedule to keep. So please keep your comments within three minutes. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Professor Petteri Talas, Secretary General of WMO. Dear colleagues, uh, dear friends of water, it's a pleasure to address you. Uh, and I'm um, leading WMO, which is uh, UN Specialized Agency on Weather, Climate and Water. And water is, uh, is, is a key issue for us. We are in charge of the operational uh, water services and also operational observing systems related to the water and related uh, science as well. And for us, uh, uh, we are a fact-based organization, and I would like to tell you a few facts about uh, water. For example, we have already seen major changes in the global rainfall patterns. Uh, we, we talk about global warming, but that's a misleading term. I, I would uh, like to talk about climate change and the biggest impacts of climate change so far they have been felt uh, through water. We have already seen uh, 
changes in the precipitation patterns, for example, Africa, Southern Asia, and, uh, Western part of North America, and uh, Amazonia region have become drier during the past uh, 100 years. And also last year, we saw uh, plenty of uh, drought-related problems, uh, again, in, in North and South America, uh, in Eastern uh, Russia, in Mediterranean region, and then we saw also severe flooding problems, uh, for example, in, in Eastern uh, China. And during the past uh, 20 years, uh, half, uh, 2 billion inhabitants have been exposed to a dramatic uh, flooding event, and about 1.5 billion inhabitants have been exposed to severe drought, uh, which has also led to uh, casualties. Uh, the bad news is that uh, we, we had just reported that uh, we, we, we see melting of all of the mountain glaciers, and that means that we already today have uh, less uh, water, uh, which is melting to the major rivers uh, worldwide. And if you look at the future, uh, we will soon release the IPCC report in the coming August, and we already know that, uh, that some parts of the world will uh, get further drier, and that's, that's the case for Mediterranean region, Southern Africa, Australia, eastern part of, uh, of Asia, and especially South and North America. And this is a threat for global food production capacity. And population growth is uh, making the case even more challenging, especially in Africa and, uh, and some, some parts of uh, Central, Central Asia. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. And, uh, and at, at, at the moment, we have uh, more than 2 billion uh, people who are uh, un already are under water stress. Uh, we have 130 countries uh, who are not able to manage their water resources sustainably. And, uh, and about half of the WMO 90, 193 members uh, have proper uh, hydrological services, and, uh, and only uh, one third of our members have proper hydrological observing systems. And, and also the financing for Sustainable Development Goal 6 uh, implementation has been lagging behind. Uh, we have only received uh, one third of the financing that was uh, supposed to be allocated this, uh, this field. And that's why we have, uh, together with the 10 other UN partners, we have created uh, Sustainable Development Goal 6 uh, Accelerator Program, Water and Climate Coalition, and, and we will launch that uh, during the COP26 meeting later later in Glasgow. And we have also a high-level panel, which consists of uh, presidents, uh, prime ministers, ministers, uh, private sector, youth, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and NGOs uh, who are contributing to the success of that. So with this word uh, from WMO's side, we are committed to work for concrete uh, things at the country level to improve the national hydrological services, uh, observing systems, and uh, help them to adapt to climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Peteri, uh, for your knowledge and facts. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Henrietta Four, Executive Director of UNICEF. Thank you very much, Carolina. And it is such a pleasure to be here today with all of you. So excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the world's young people. This discussion could not come at a better time. UNICEF believes that the acceleration on water sanitation and hygiene is urgently needed. Even before the COVID-19 struck, our progress on SDG 6 was alarmingly off track. COVID-19 has exacerbated this need. As a global community, we need to reach more children faster and in more places with life-saving and sustainable solutions. And since the launch of SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework last year, UNICEF and our partners have moved forward on a number of fronts. The Hand Hygiene for All initiative is a good example. When the pandemic struck, we knew that hand washing with soap and water could be critical in stopping the spread of COVID-19 and other infections. But we also knew that 3 billion people in the world lacked water and soap at home. A shocking statistic that reminds us how out of reach even the most basic preventative measures like hand washing can be for billions of people. 
As part of our response, UNICEF and our partners delivered water and soap to vulnerable communities, but we also came together with key public and private partners to boost investment in this critical area and create innovative new products. One example is the Sato Tap, a hand-washing device that uses plastic bottles, making hand hygiene possible and cost-effective in low-resource environments. Our goal is not only to make rapid progress during this emergency, but to sustain these gains over the long term and to make these systems pandemic proof from schools and homes to public markets and local facilities. We are also inspired by the work of countries to bring to life the roadmap of action in the State of the World Sanitation Report UNICEF has developed with the World Health Organization. Indonesia's progress in eliminating open defecation is a good example of this. So is Kenya's accelerated work with the private sector to develop innovations that can reach the most underserved communities to help countries and communities achieve even more progress in the years ahead, UNICEF is moving forward on our Reimagining WASH, Water Security for All initiative. We need to find new ways to support 1.4 billion people worldwide, including 450 million children who live in areas of high and extremely high water vulnerability. This means better linking our work to supply drinking water with all water required for agriculture, industry, and energy production. One example is UNICEF's work in Madagascar to provide water for families to use at home and for crop production. Another is our ongoing work to scale up solar-powered water systems in communities, schools, and healthcare facilities. This year alone, we've installed more than 1,400 of these systems across 41 countries. These systems can help ensure that systems that can operate even during drought periods or weather shocks like cyclones. We saw this in Mozambique after Cyclone Idai, when UNICEF systems continued to operate after the storm and provided life-saving water to surrounding communities whose water points were either flooded or had no power. So in conclusion, we need more solutions like this. As the world plans for a post-COVID recovery, this is the moment to build sustainable and resilient water, sanitation, and hygiene systems. And UNICEF looks forward to working with our public and our private partners, with our sister agencies, and with civil society to make this happen. So thank you, Carolina. Back over to you. Thank you, Ms. Henrietta, for your important examples on progress. Next up, we have Ms. Usha Rao Monari, Under Secretary General and Associate Administrator of UNDP. Thank you very much, Carolina. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure uh, to be part of this important event and to follow uh, Ms. Four uh, in her excellent comments. Uh, around uh, this topic, very important topic. From UNDP's perspective and from the perspective of all of us, water is life, water is dignity, water is gender parity, as one of the earlier speakers spoke about. Water, in fact, is the resilience of humanity and the planet. The global pandemic put a large spotlight on the importance of water sanitation and hygiene as an important line of defense against infectious diseases. However, this line of defense is not available to everyone, as Mr. Hongbu very ably pointed out in his earlier remarks, as did the head of WHO. The crisis also exposed unacceptable inequalities between the haves and the have-nots when it came to this important basic core service for life. In UNDP, uh, we have done a lot of work, which I will get into uh, around water, but what is very, very exciting, very interesting for us here at UNDP is that the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework offers a roadmap, an important roadmap of how to do things a little differently, how to bring more investment into the sector, how to govern the sector in a way where everyone, every man, woman, and child has access to this basic resource. I would like to 
take two of the six areas that the roadmap has identified and focus on that. First, on governance. UNDP has long recognized that the roots of the water crisis can be traced to poverty, inequality, and in fact, unequal power relationships. In this sense, water access is a very important aspect of the space, but so is water security, the management of water resources combined with the management of land resources is absolutely vital in resolving the conflicting demands and the allocation of the water resource. That's why here in UNDP, we have put in roughly $600 million last year in 2020 um, into the water space where we have enabled through our uh, expertise and our networks and our partners, policy, regulatory, and institutional environments that facilitate efficient and equitable water use and product, uh, protection. Out of this, a lot of our work has been in the climate adaptation area, but a lot of it has also been in terms of ensuring better access to users of water, be it agriculture, be it cities, be it the individual. We have been working on this. Our partners in this have been very important and long-standing partners such as CEDA from Sweden, Global Environment Facility, and many others that we've been working with uh, over, over, over the last few years. We also support ecosystem-based governance in partnership with the GEF. And, and we have worked in 27 shared lakes, rivers, and aquifers to deal with the important issue of transboundary water. The second, um, Carolina, that I'd like to address in my, in my words is investment. When I, given my background, where I come from, I've been looking at investment into water and always, always inevitably over the last two decades, the water sector is the one that has received the least amount of investment and, and financing. If you look at it versus other base, basic services such as energy, water has typically received eight to 10% of, of, of all flows uh, globally into energy, water, et cetera. This is an important and, and, and in fact, dramatic point that we have to look at in our acceleration framework. How do we bring more finance at scale into the sector so that needed investments and restructurings can, can occur in order to provide access to all? UNDP's Thank SDG you, Ms. Bisha. I have, has I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have to keep moving. If you'd Thank like you to put very much. your extra uh, points in the chat. Include. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you so much. Feel free to put your points in the chat. Um, I apologize, just a tight schedule to keep. Next up, we have Mr. Rodolfo Lacey, Environmental Director of the OECD. Thank you very much, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, having us and giving us the opportunity uh, to update you on how the OECD Environment Directorate contributes to the global acceleration uh, framework and to flag opportunities to join forces uh, on the way uh, to the 2023 conference. My directorate actively contributes to the optimized financing accelerator uh, with several uh, current and new initiatives. First, uh, our dedicated platform for engagement on water financing, the round table on financing water. This is a joint initiative uh, with the World Bank Group, with the World Water Council and with the government of the Netherlands. It engages a diversity of actors focused on finding new novel ideas and solutions for financing water. Uh, our next round table, uh, by the way, will be held in September the 27 and 28, focusing on how financing water uh, contributes to climate action. A dedicated round table meeting to support the 2023 UN Conference on Water to be organized uh, to build momentum on, on financing. Uh, second, uh, we are launching two major new initiatives on financing water that can contribute to the global acceleration framework. Or, or first, the establishment of a global observatory of financing water supply, sanitation and water is, uh, security, with support from the US government. The observatory uh, will provide a unique repository of good practices, peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, and horizon scanning for new mm -hmm. developments uh, related to financing water. Second, the development of an, uh, an OECD framework on financing and diagnostic tools to support country level work to strengthen the enabling environment. 
The framework is particularly aligned with the UN water family's increased focus on concrete country support. With this, the OECD is committed to accelerate the financing that effectively and practically contributes to the SDG 6 and the broader 2030 agenda. Uh, in line, of course, with the ambition of the 2023 conference uh, to contribute to, to action. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Rodolfo, for your points. Next up, we have Mr. Pedro Arrojo Agudo, Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights to Safe Drinking Water and Sanitation. Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. Well, in my view, uh, when it comes to the challenge of accelerating efforts to achieve the SDG 6, uh, the so-called financial gap argument for lack of public funds to address the necessary investment uh, in uh, war services is in the face of climate change is more unacceptable than ever. Uh, well, years ago in the 2008 crisis, arguing the lack of public funds to finance the needs of wash services in the context of austerity strategies, well, made sense. And saying this, I am in no way trying to justify the mistake that was made with these strategies and the catastrophic consequences of poverty and inequality. But in that context, the financial gap argument for lack of, of public funds uh, made sense. Today, it does not make sense. Fortunately, the pandemic has forced us to change the strategy. Indeed, trillions of dollars have been, are being, and will be made available to address the pandemic and the post-pandemic socioeconomic revival in the context of the Green New Deal challenge in the 21st century. On the other hand, as a result of the ordeal of the pandemic, a general consensus is growing around the world on the need to strengthen public health systems as an unprecedented not-for-profit leave-no-one-behind public effort. The challenge of public investment in water, sanitation, and hygiene services in the face of climate change, especially in impoverished countries and communities, must, in my view, be addressed as a matter of priorities, as a global democratic imperative. Investments in wash services as a cornerstone of public health deserve priority in the use of a portion of uh, these available public funds to ensure not only the development of these services, but their affordability for those 2.2 billion people. Because we must remember that these 2.2 billion people are impoverished people who will not be able to pay if the financializing uh, logic uh, that has so far dominated the economy in general and wash services in particular is applied. We are talking about a democratic challenge, not a business opportunity. Well, the surprisingly hasty debate on global taxation sparked by President Biden is in my view, a sign that the time has come to reframe the close linkage of public health with human rights to safe drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene. But this time, with arguments reinforced by unprecedented social support from suffering caused by the pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you for your passionate remarks, Mr. Pedro. It's now time for UN Water Member Video Spotlights. Thank you to everyone who shared short shout out videos and their support for the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework. Nothing undermines sustainable development like a disaster. Globally, 90% of disasters have been caused by floods, storms, droughts, and other water-related events. 2023 will mark the midpoint in the implementation 
of the Water Action Decade and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. Now, more than ever, we need to make sure water-related risks, both the lack of it and too much of it, do not derail a sustainable future for our planet and humanity. There is no food production without water, and the UN FAO is transforming food systems to produce more nutritious food with less water, using innovation, capacity building, and targeted investments to resolve issues around water scarcity in a changing climate, and to build resilience to farmers, to drought, and shocks for ensuring food security and nutrition. In the international labor organization, we are convinced that trade unions, employers, and governments can play a large role in advancing SDG 6 by providing access to water and sanitation in workplaces of all types. In that sense, the ILO is part of the SDG 6 community. IOM provides sustainable, safe, and equitable access to water, sanitation, and hygiene services by working with migrants and receiving host communities in address low capacity and fragile countries to leave no one behind. Since the SDGs were adopted in 2015, global threats such as climate change, pandemics, conflicts, and resource scarcity have forced more people to migrate, to adapt, or survive. IOM recognizes the urgency of achieving SDG 6 targets to support community well-being and dignity in the long term with less ensuring resilience to these future shocks. Transboundary Water Cooperation is crucial for peace and sustainable development since more than 60% of fresh water worldwide flows in shared basins. But so far, only 24 out of the 153 countries sharing waters worldwide meet the related SDGC target. UNICE is contributing to the Global Acceleration Framework, in particular governance and capacity development. The Water Convention is a unique global legal and intergovernmental framework for transponding cooperation. Let's all work together to improve and accelerate cooperation. Accelerating progress towards SDG 6 is essential, and it is more than anything else a matter of political will. Whether the sector gets the resources and the prioritization it needs is a political determination, and SWA, the Sanitation and Water for All Partnership, is committed to push water and sanitation further up the political agenda, demonstrating their significance for social and economic development, for health and for dignity. Water and sanitation, we all know that, are human rights. But having people, um, billions of people, without access to them is unacceptable and by no means inevitable. Change is within reach and together we can do it. What a great series of videos. Thank you again to those that submitted. Next up, we have Mr. Torgeny Holmgrim. Executive Director of CWI. Thank you, and thank you, Jon Water, for inviting us to this event. Even if SDG 6 is not on the review this year, I think it's so important that we bring water to the agenda and to the discussion and to run through the total Agenda 2030. And it's so crucial also for sustainable, resilient recovery from COVID-19. This has not least been shown in the program that we are undertaking together with UNICEF and UNDP under the title Accountability for Sustainability Program. This program is aiming for the sustainability of water and sanitation services through the inclusion of wash governance and accountability aspects in UNICEF and UNDP country programs. Under the partnership, CIV and UNICEF have mapped COVID-19 wash responses in 84 countries. This mapping showed the critical nature of water services as a first line of defense against the disease. It also showed that access to water services and wash services is critical for resilient, including resilient recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Based on this mapping, we have in partnership with UNICEF and UNDP supported the response to the pandemic in a number of regions and countries. And let me share some examples with you. In Latin America, a generic COVID-19 wash emergency response framework was developed and successfully used to produce humanitarian wash uh, responsible plans uh, for uh, 10 countries. A comprehensive review of the socioeconomic effects of COVID-19 on water, sanitation, hygiene has also been made intended to build a resilient COVID-19 uh, recovery through WASH. We have also developed a WASH regulation toolkit in partnership with HWO and Inter-American Development Bank for use by countries to diagnose regulatory bottlenecks and plan for accelerated regulatory reform. In Africa and the MENA region, we are supporting a number of countries to increase their capacity to shift to climate resilient wash approaches for water security. Now, as we've heard today in this uh, seminar, there is a lot that can be done and is being done despite the ongoing pandemic. We need to work hard to ensure that the recovery efforts bring us closer to fulfilling the 2030 agenda and to a water wise world that recognize the value of water and showing that it's also uh, inclusively shared for all. The SDG Global Acceleration Framework serves as a very useful roadmap for how to get there. We, know, we now have an opportunity to build political momentum to make that happen. We stand ready to do our part and we invite you all to continue this discussion at the virtual World Water Week end of August. So thank you for having me, thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. Torchny. Up next, we have Ms. Claire Lund, Vice President of Sustainability, GSK. Good morning or afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here talking to you today. For those of, us, for those of you who don't know who we are, we are a science-led global healthcare company with a special purpose to improve the quality of human life by helping people do more, feel better and live longer. We know there is increasing scientific evidence linking the impact of climate change and nature loss on human health from extreme heat, increased spread of infectious diseases and air pollution exacerbating respiratory issues. I wanted to share our journey on environmental ambitions and more specifically on the water agenda, including our experience with the Water Resilience Coalition. We've long been committed to reducing our environmental impact, and we were one of the first pharmaceutical companies to set ambitious environmental targets in 2010. Since then, across our operations, we've reduced our carbon emissions by 34%, waste landfill by 78%, and total water use by 31%. We've made great progress, but given the scale and urgency of the challenge and the impact on health, we want to go further faster. So in November 2020, we announced new ambitious environmental goals in both climate and nature, aiming to have a net zero impact on climate and a net positive impact on nature. Both aims by 2030 and both across our entire end to end value chain. Within the nature agenda, we're committed to meeting good water stewardship standards at all of our sites, and many of our global operations are already operating at this level but we know we need to do more and with our new ambition we're working towards being water neutral where water resources are under local stress not only for our own sites but also for our key suppliers in our value chain as well this includes reducing the amount of water we use investing in community projects to support the sustainable use of water improved sanitation education and infrastructure initiatives we know we can't do this alone and collaboration is key to expanding the scale and scope of our water efforts to address the magnitude of the global water crisis. Building on our previous commitments with the CEO water mandate, we proudly joined the UN Water Resilience Coalition in November 2020. And with this, we have signed up to the collective ambition to positively impact water in over 100 basins worldwide and to enable sustainable access to drinking water and sanitation to 100 million people by 2030. Being part of the collaborative action on water means we can accelerate and build on our work in water stressed areas where we've already made significant progress against our water reduction targets. For example, in our Cape Town facility, 
We've reduced water use by over 53%, and it is going to be the first site in the GSK network to embark on the journey of water neutrality. This will only be achieved with collaboration and through the Water Resilience Coalition and local partners to address the local shared water challenges. It's just the beginning of the journey of many collaboration opportunities, which we, which we will be exploring. And we hope to tackle the water challenges and accelerate our journey towards a water resilient future for a healthy planet and healthy people. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, thank you Claire, for your valuable points on health, climate change, and water. Now onto more video spotlights provided by UN Water Partners. Private water operators fully support the SDG 6 acceleration framework. Change management, capacity development, data and transparency are accelerators that have always been at the heart of our businesses. We now need even stronger partnerships between private sector, public authorities and stakeholders at local, national and international level to meet SDG targets. Thank you. Greetings from the Global Water Partnership. This year, we celebrate 25 years building a water secure world. Together with our partners, we run the SDG6 IWRM support program, which assists countries accelerate implementation of water-related SDGs through an integrated approach. Together, we can achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Join me. The world's nations are still facing many persistent and unresolved hydroenvironmental challenges. IHR brings together a global network of experts, scientists and practitioners to accelerate solutions and knowledge discovery about the water environment. The SDG 6 acceleration framework is critical to bring focus to our global work and our contributions in technologies, innovations, data, best engineering practices, education and capacity building. Together, along with UN Water members and partners, we look forward to bringing forth the best and the latest of science and practice knowledge for a better water future. Thank you. Faster progress on SDG 6 will mean acceleration across all SDGs that need water to succeed. Digital innovation can propel acceleration. At the International Water Management Institute, we're using earth observation, data cubes, and water accounting to deliver water data and information to investors, innovators, and decision makers more easily at lower cost and faster. No other challenge is bigger and more important today than ensuring that people everywhere have access to clean water and sanitation. At the International Water Resources Association, we contribute to the attainment of SDG 6 by bridging the gap between science and policy. All IWRA publications and events respond to key water policy challenges while informing policymakers about the latest water research. We join with our friends around the world in the effort to make SDG 6 a permanent mainstay of global to local water management. To achieve our water related goals and targets, we need healthy wetlands. Wetlands provide most of the water we consume, much of the food we eat, and are an asset in mitigating and adapting to climate change. The Convention on Wetlands protects these valuable ecosystems and is leading an acceleration action to support national wetlands inventories and reporting on indicator SDG 661. We are not going to secure clean water for all unless we address the interconnected climate and nature crisis, and in particular invest in healthy rivers, lakes, wetlands, forests. Everything is connected. It's time to move forward fast towards a carbon neutral and nature positive society. The only way to achieve sustainable development and an equitable future for all. Thank you again for all those that submitted. 
and for the inspiring videos. Next up, we have Ms. Xiaoyan Charlene Ren, founder and director of My H2O. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Charlene, and I'm the UN Young Champions of 2020. And I'm also the founder of My H2O. And we are an organization that works collectively with young people to bring water solutions to rural communities uh, across China. Like many developing economies, China's improvement of water environment quality is definitely still underway. And there are still a large number of villages that are ac uh, lacking access to clean water resources. There are still places where water has been polluted beyond their capacity to recover. But unlike popular impressions, there is actually a wide range of active civil society efforts seriously engaged in the accomplishments of SDG 6 in China. And that's where our organization and its innovations come in. We are working with a nationwide network of young volunteers, mostly from universities across China, and we're sending them into rural communities to help test for the water, to carry out awareness campaigns to local schools, and map out this information onto a common data platform. We're following the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework, where data and information, as well as youth participation, are fundamental to supporting the mobilization of resources, especially targeted at marginalized and disadvantaged communities across China. Our volunteer-based data map is intending to use this framework to do the same. It's really hoping to act as a hub to support these villages in finding the resources they need to improve their local water schemes and also to track the ongoing progress in each of these communities where solutions have been implemented and see its progress. Many of our young volunteers have also fundraised through the platforms to bring water solutions and purifiers and reservoirs to these communities in need. We have so far worked with over hundreds of university teams across China. We've collected data over thousands of villages and delivered clean water solutions to tens of thousands of beneficiaries. And today is actually my 30th birthday. And for the past decade, I've already been engaged in water and sanitation efforts across China. And I've also watched countless young people like me engage in very similar efforts. As the rural revitalization scheme now becomes a top priority for the next five-year plan of China, this trend will only become more and more obvious. And it's a trend that definitely should be seen and registered in the international scope. There's certainly not enough credit and resources given to the water sector. And these populations in action right now also need a better platform to take the actions that they would like. So I'm standing alongside our youth communities calling for more attention and more partnerships under the SDG 6 goal. Let the young people be involved. Let the citizen scientists in the rural areas be involved and let all these NGOs be involved. It's only then that we'll have more hope to maybe catch up with what we've already been lagging behind in the implementation of the safe sanitation and water for all. Thank you. Thank you for telling us about your inspiring work and message. Next, we have Ms. Marie Christina Colo, eco-feminist, social entrepreneur, and climate activist. Hi. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm Mary Christina Colo, I'm from Madagascar. I'm having this slide with you directly from Ambuvumbe Andrui, which is currently um, one of the uh, one of the regions facing uh, an emergency, an humanitarian crisis, because uh, because of climate change, we are we are considered as a country with uh, the first drought uh, directly related, the first famine directly related to uh, climate change. And as, um, as an eco-feminist, a climate activist and a social entrepreneur, a young social entrepreneur, I wanted to bring a solution because a few years ago, I, I used to work as a UN volunteer in this region of Madagascar. And, and, in, and yes, I discovered uh, how climate change could affect daily life. I, I discovered how climate change uh, affects gender, uh, gender equality too, and uh, related and uh, regarding water. Um, as a social, uh, as a social entrepreneur, 
uh, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, I wanted to do something uh, with my team. So um, with my social business called Green and Cool, um, based in the, the capital city, we developed two solutions. The, the first one is, um, is to collect uh, all wet could coil and to recycle them in order to make some soap because in Madagascar, according to UNICEF, three out of four people do not have access to water and soap. So we, we are making soap. We were able to create jobs to vulnerable people thanks to this solution and also affordable and eco-friendly soap uh, because for each soap boat, one was given to vulnerable population and people. So it was a solidarity solution that we found in the middle of the, the pandemic. And, um, and in less than a year, we were able to, to provide more than 40,000 soaps in different uh, schools, in different uh, areas of Madagascar. But regarding the, the extreme south, where uh, I am right now, uh, one, one other solution that we developed was to, um, was to provide a prototype of no rinse soap that is, that is affordable to and that can be used for those who do not have access to water. And access to water and soap today is just, it's just fundamental, it's just essential. And um, the reason why today I wanted to do this live in the middle um, of this uh, region, uh, actually, I, I'm yeah, I'm just next to a water pump, uh, just here. When people are waiting to get to get some water, when water is just something rare, um, I, I'm here because I'm I'm also empowering other youth, and I, I want to say that youth voices count. Youth innovations can uh, should be valorized and youth innovation from developing countries like mine should be valorized because we also have solution. We have a voice and we need to be heard and put on the table. So I hope that you will uh, listen to my small advocacy. And if you want to know more, do not hesitate to, to, contact, uh, to contact me and contact us to know more about what youth in Madagascar are doing to change the game. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie, for that inspiring message and innovative solutions. It's been a pleasure to moderate this session. Thank you all again for your inspiring words and messages of hope. We will now conclude with the final set of video spotlights. Thank you. The International Association of Hydrogeologists is a worldwide groundwater organization. Groundwater provides drinking water to at least 50% of the global population. But groundwater is a hidden and vulnerable resource. Sustainable groundwater is a key element in global resilience to climate change, as a shield against ecosystem loss, and as a defense against human deprivation and poverty. Resilience to pandemics Sustainability of outcomes and prioritisation of vulnerable people. These are all outcomes of a human rights based approach and the keystone to our work at Human Rights to Water. There needs to be a change in focus, strengthening governance and integrating the human rights to water and sanitation so that nobody is being left behind. IGREC contributes to Goal 6, particularly on capacity development and data and information. IGREC will organize the Groundwater Summit, a key event in 2022, the Year of Groundwater. This high-level event in Paris will focus on the SDG 6 Acceleration Framework implementation. IGREC also develops the Groundwater Catalog, enabling policymakers to explore suitable solutions for complex issues. My name is Shirin Lwatar and I study at IHE Delft in the Netherlands. Water scarcity and inaccessibility to clean water is a reality in many places globally. Despite the effort of my country to deliver wash services to everyone, we are still lacking sufficient water experts. This is why I am studying here, alongside 150 other international students. We are the water experts of the future, united in our effort to contribute to clean water and sanitation for all. The 
Achieving the SDGs means extending water and sanitation services at rates that are much faster than we've ever achieved before. Cutting and pasting solutions rarely works though. So our role at IRC as a think and do tank is to work alongside government and other partners, finding ways to strengthen systems that work, sustain and scale. The challenge is big, but together we have the capacity to achieve change. Hello, my name is Leslie Pores, and I am manager of sector strategy at water.org. Water.org works at the intersection of water, sanitation, and finance to identify financial solutions that will enable us as a global community to achieve the ambitious targets of SDG 6.1 and 6.2. In the Philippines, Water.org partnered with UNICEF to ensure that their behavior change communication activities, educating households about the many advantages of water and sanitation best practices, were paired with opportunities to take loans to act upon the new knowledge households had gained. The results from a lending standpoint were massive, showing an accelerated uptake of 130% compared with lending where the behavior change communication was not happening in parallel. It is collaborations like these that will move us further, faster to SDG 6 achievement. A lot of people look at women as a problem. I mean, my goodness, what do we do with them? But I think they're the solution. Only if you work together. We're not that difficult. So. So thank you so much to Carolina for that fantastic facilitation. And wow, what a kaleidoscope of passionate speakers. Um, I'm so glad that we heard about all the targets of SDG 6. So this very important focus on, on water supply and sanitation, disaster risk reduction and um, you know, water scarcity, but also water efficiency, uh, the, the link to food systems, more crop per drop. We heard about transboundary water issues. We heard about integrated water resources management from the Global Water Partnership. And also we heard about the importance of aquatic ecosystems, wetlands and rivers. So um, this was a, a fantastic and rich intervention. Now, for the final section of this program, we're going to move to this conference in 2023 that's going to be a game changer. This is the first UN conference on water issues since Mar del Plata in 1977. And it's wonderful that we have the countries co-sponsoring this water conference that's going to be the midterm review of the water decade. And um, we have, first of all, his Excellency, Mr. Sarajinin Murihidin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan. Thank you, there's a video. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, dear participants, at the outset, I would like to extend our appreciation to the Department for Economic and Social Affairs and the UN Water for the organization of today's SDG 6 special event. Dear colleagues, the COVID-19 has emerged as the most severe global health crisis in our history, which touched every aspect of our lives. It has imposed extraordinary pressures, particularly on water and sanitation systems around the world. We believe that improved water and sanitation management, combined with climate change mitigation and adaptation strategies, would be key to build back better from the pandemic and its consequences. Because water as a fundamental element helps the world and regions to restore its capacities for mastering the current crisis and its consequences and to be more resilient when facing a future crisis. In this regard, the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework, which we launched last year is an important step in the right direction to address water and sanitation challenges that can seriously boost progress. Dear participants, 
The United Nations General Assembly declared 2018-2028 as the International Decade for Action on Water and Sustainable Development. And last December, the General Assembly unanimously adopted Resolution 75-212 on the UN Conference on the Midterm Comprehensive Review of the Implementation of the Water uh, action decade to be held in 2023. Tajikistan and the Netherlands will co-host it. The UN Secretary General appointed Mr. Louis Jenmi, the UN Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, as a Secretary General of the Water Conference 2023. We welcome his appointment and looking forward to continuing our close cooperation with him to make the conference a success. Excellencies, allow me to share with you some of these uh, the steps we have taken together with the Netherlands on the road towards 2023 Water Action Decade Conference and inform you about upcoming uh, opportunities for to engage in this process. The preparatory process for the 2023 conference started with the high-level meeting of the President of the UN General Assembly held in March 2021. Taking this opportunity, I would like to extend my gratitude to His Excellency Mr. Volkan Boskir uh, for the excellent organization of the event. On June 25th, 2021, we had the fifth UN special thematic sessions on water and disasters held online uh, to globally raise awareness and uh, promote actions for building back better towards a more resilient and sustainable uh, society in the post-COVID-19 era by addressing the issues of water and disasters as well as other development issues such as urbanization, food, environment and climate change. The same day, a preparatory meeting for the Asian Pacific region entitled in Implementing SDG 6 and the Water Action Decade Partnership to Build Water Resilience was held virtually on the sidelines of Singapore International Water Week. It was followed by another important high-level conference on the 1st July in Germany under the theme Water Dialogues for Results Born 2021, accelerating cross-sectoral SDG 6 implementation uh, of the water-related goals and targets of the 2030 Agenda for uh, Sustainable Development. I believe Her Excellency Mrs. Svenja Schulze, uh, Federal Minister for the Environment, Nature, uh, Conservation and Nuclear Safety of Germany, will brief us about its outcomes. Dear colleagues, more important events are coming soon, such as uh, the UN Biodiversity Conference COP15 in uh, Kunming, China, Cairo Water uh, Week, uh, a high-level event on snow and ice in climate change on the margins of the COP26 in Glasgow, and next year we, we will uh, have in March World Water Forum in Senegal, in April uh, Asia-Pacific Water Summit in Japan, uh, high-level symposium on water in Lisbon, on the sidelines of the UN Ocean Conference and International Dushanbe Water Conference. We are confident that all these events will make a valuable contribution to the 2023 Water Decade Conference as well as uh, to Dushanbe High-Level Water Decade Conference in the summit. Uh, of 2022 uh, before we had uh, to a one-day preparatory meeting in November uh, 2022 in New York to finalize the themes of the interactive dialogues and other outstanding organizational matters of the UN Water Conference 2023. Thank you for your attention.
now we will hear from the government of the Netherlands, from Her Excellency Ms. Kitty van der Heyden, the Director General for International Cooperation of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And of course, the Netherlands and the Tajikistan are co-sponsoring the 2023 conference. Excellencies, distinguished guests, I feel a great sense of urgency and responsibility talking to you all today. The Dutch government is very much afraid that we are not going to reach the goals that we together have set ourselves as a global community. COVID-19 reminded us of the vital importance of washing our hands. And yet billions, billions of people do not have access to the most basic facilities like soap and clean water. A fact of which, frankly, I think we should be ashamed. And COVID-19 has been an additional setback. It has made an existing water crisis even worse. Now, without water, sustainable development is simply impossible. Yet only climate resilience will enable us to cover the enormous distance that still separates us from reaching SDG 6. Water is truly a cross-cutting goal. It is closely linked to the other SDGs, for example, land, oceans, climate, gender equality and health. Truly, one could say that water runs like a river through all of the other global goals. It is key to enable, to connect and to integrate the whole 2030 agenda. And change must happen at all levels if we want to achieve the SDGs. And it must happen now. Because when the river runs dry, there can be permanent damage. And I believe that the year 2020 finally put water back on the agenda. Last year we launched the crucial SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework. Now is the time to take the next step. What we desperately need is a cross-sector inclusive approach. Building on existing capacities, we need new networks, new partnerships and unconventional solutions. And I believe, I truly believe, that we have the biggest opportunity ever right now to take this approach. The 2023 UN Conference on Water Action Decade, co-hosted by Tajikistan and the Netherlands, will be a milestone. None of the events in the run-up to this conference, including stepping stone events like the one last week in Bonn or the one next year in Dushanbe, is merely preparatory. No. 2023 will highlight the progress we've made bringing in partners and countries together at all levels. The progress we've made in mobilizing young people and women, in securing high-level political commitment and in setting up multi-stakeholder platforms, as well as in finding people-centered solutions to help those most in need of clean water and sanitation. Building on this global acceleration framework and the important work that has been showcased today, the 2023 conference gives us a clear deadline. It should impel us to work even harder, to deliver results on the necessary scale and to set a clear agenda for the road up to 2030. The current water crisis can make individual parties feel overwhelmed and perhaps even helpless. But I don't think we should be. Tajikistan and the Netherlands may be co-hosting the conference in 2023, but this truly is an agenda in which we are all together. I believe that together the UN member states and the UN system, with UN DESA and UN Water playing a key coordinating role, are capable of organizing a successful, action-packed conference that will really make a difference. In the run-up to 2023, the Netherlands will go all out to mobilize all stakeholders, coalitions and partners and focus our programs and investments on achieving the SDGs. It is truly now or never. So let us concentrate on what we do well. Let us do it better and let's stop doing what sets us back. Let's get to work. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished guests. So I think we're starting to get an amazing sense of the political acceleration getting towards 2023. 
um, we have one more video of the day. And now we're going to hear from Her Excellency Ms. Svenja Schulze, Federal Minister for the Environment of the Republic of Germany, who was the chair of the Bonn Dialogues on Water last week. Liu Zemin, Gilbert Hombo, Excellencies, esteemed colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to talk to you at this first SDG 6 special event. Congratulations to UN Water. This is a first important milestone in implementing the global SDG 6 accelerators framework. With today's event, we are highlighting how important SDG 6 is for other sectors and global challenges. Water resources are under pressure worldwide. Climate change is having a direct impact on the availability and quality of water. Urbanization, population growth and economic development are increasing this pressure. This can be felt worldwide, in Germany too. And that is why four weeks ago, I presented a draft national water strategy for the first time in the history of German's environmental policy. It points the way to sustainable resource management and shows how to prevent conflicts of use. The central message is that the age of silo mentality and rigidly sticking to traditional areas of competences is over. Sustainable protection of global water resources requires cooperation across all sectors, political levels and borders. This principle is also at the heart of Germany's international commitment in the water sector, and this is why we launched the Water Dialogues for Results. These Water Dialogues on the accelerated implementation of SDG 6 successfully brought together political decision makers from all parts of the world, technical experts and representatives of major groups from civil society and industry. Our common goal is to bring about a new way of thinking at global level and to launch sustainable solutions to the global water crisis. We presented the results at a virtual high-level conference on 1st of July. And I would like to briefly outline the five key messages. Firstly, we need a new paradigm for financing. Implementation of the 2030 Agenda and global trends necessitate collective and inclusive efforts by governments, banks, and the private sector, civil society, and in, in international cooperation. Secondly, we need data-based decision-making. We will only be able to tackle complex challenges if we can make effective use of modern technologies and new data sources. And thirdly, we need a holistic approach to capacity development. Knowledge has to be transferred beyond training and placed in cross-sectoral context. We should build capacities at all levels. We will work together to ensure that capacities are developed wherever they are needed most. And fourthly, we need transformation. We need to combine traditional and indigenous knowledge with technological and social innovation. This will accelerate implementation of the SDGs and manage the increasing uncertainties caused by the impacts of climate change. And finally, we need a cross-sectoral cooperative approach to achieve good water governance. We will strengthen and enhance cooperation between different levels of government, domestically, cross-border, and multilaterally. Our goal here is to optimize the use of scarce resources, minimize conflicts over use, manage rising demand and safeguard human rights. The issue of water needs to remain on, at the top of the United Nations agenda for the long term. And that is why we advocate appointing a UN special envoy on water. The key messages of the water dialogues for results will lay the foundations for the continued preparations of the midterm review of the water action decade in 2023. And I encourage all governments that haven't already done so to support these key messages and continue this dialogue together. Further preparatory meetings for the UN Water Conference in 2023 will offer a number of opportunities. 
Germany will remain committed to this process. We will contribute our many years of experience in water management and provide financial support. We can only make SDG 6 a success story by working together. Together, we can transform dialogues into results. Thank you. Well, that was a great opportunity to hear about the outcomes of the Bond Dialogues on Water. And now it's, I'm very delighted to welcome Her Excellency Dr. Amal Madulali, the permanent resident of Lebanon to the United Nations, who has kindly joined us live in this session. Dr. Amal, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. And it's an honor for me and for Lebanon to be part of this very important event on a very, very important topic, which is the source of our life on this earth. Uh, I would like to start by thanking UN Water and UN DESA and UNESCO for this event. And also I would like to thank the speakers, the Minister of Tajikistan and the Director General of the uh, Director General of the International Development of the Netherlands uh, for this. But most importantly, I would like to thank the speakers, all the speakers before, especially the activists from Madagascar, because she drove the point about the importance of climate change on water and on life on this earth and all the hardships people are going through. Uh, today's event also is an important step in maintaining the growing momentum to achieve the water action decade while paving the way for a successful and ambitious midterm review conference in 2023. Uh, I would like to speak about Lebanon first. Lebanon has a solid history of collaboration with UN bodies to improve water resources management locally and in the Mediterranean at large. Lebanon's Ministry of Energy and Water Resources is currently engaged in the preparation of the strategic plan for the ninth phase of the UNESCO Intergovernmental Hydrological Program 2022-2029 to achieve the SDGs, the Paris Agreement, the Sendai uh, Framework, and the New Urban Agenda. Excellencies, the pandemic has revealed, as everybody said, more than ever, how water is life and the crucial role water plays in preserving not only human life, but also human dignity especially for people in vulnerable situations. Water is also a vital factor for peace and stability and it's indispensable to achieving the SDGs. The Arab world is one of the most affected regions by climate change. 63% of fertile land in the region is highly vulnerable to climate disruption. This could increase dependency on imports and deplete foreign reserves in already highly indebted countries. More important is the fact that two thirds of fresh water resources in the region cross one or more international boundaries, which can aggravate conflicts in the absence of shared management frameworks and fair international cooperation. In this context, we attach great importance to the water peace security nexus and stress the urgency of abiding by international law, regulating dense boundary cooperation to foster development while maintaining regional stability and avoiding conflict within the region and with its neighbors. Excellencies, one of the richest countries in water resources in the Middle East, Lebanon, faces multiple challenges to sustain its adequate water services. Despite having quite substantial water and water uh, uh, wastewater network coverage, Lebanon continues working towards reducing water shortages and levels of water pollution. These challenges have been exasperated by rapid urbanization, climate change, and the influx of large numbers of refugees who increased demand on water services by 30%, according to UN Habitat, as well as demand on energy and food products. This highlights the importance of tackling the water energy food security nexus at the national and regional levels, as well as the linkages between humanitarian crises and water stress. Here lies the importance of SDG 6, Global Acceleration Framework to properly address these concerns as innovation, governance, and capacity building are key to overcome water challenges. One of the SDG 6 acceleration initiatives is Lebanon's Water Energy, Food, Health, Nexus Research Unit, the American University of Beirut. It aims at creating a community of researchers and experts from different faculties, schools, and research and policy units to accelerate the achievement of re relevant SDGs, research and development, are the basis of innovation. The question of financing is also central to the water context. We must raise ambition and mobilize further resources, including public-private partnerships and concessional finance to enhance water infrastructure and governance, while giving youth 
and female entrepreneurs the opportunity to shape the future of this vital sector. We also need to enable policymakers to employ quality, accessible, timely, and reliable disaggregated data, smart technologies, and monitoring mechanisms to develop effective cross-sectoral uh, policies. Also, capacity building programs are needed in water diplomacy and mediation, including in the framework, framework of conflict prevention, especially in developing countries. Prevention should also apply to water-related disasters, which damage ranges from 15 to 40% of GDP for some small economies. This requires adaptation, effective preparedness, as well as robust early warning and response systems. Finally, we look forward to the medium review conference, hoping it's high time to collectively commit to ensuring equal enjoyment of human rights to water and sanitation based on lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. We truly believe that safe water and adequate sanitation for all are important to achieve a set of targets such as poverty reduction, food security, inclusive growth, health, ecosystems, and should be placed at the center of resilient, inclusive and sustainable recovery. I thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Amal, and thank you for this really important contribution and in particular highlighting the plight of refugees, um, as well as so many of the other important points that you made. Our final speaker now in this section is Mr. Vincent Juchou, who is the Head of Climate and Development at the Permanent Mission of France to the United Nations. And Mr. Juchou, the floor is yours. Yes, dear Nia, I hope you hear me well. So first of all, I would like to thank UN Water for its continuous efforts to raise attention and maintain UN family, member states and partners mobilization on water issues and especially on SDG 6 achievement by 2030. So um, dear colleagues, excellencies, the increasing pressures on water resources and the impact of climate change on the global hydrological cycle and water related ecosystems, as well as, as the lack of financial resources dedicated to the water sector, let us no choice. We need both to speed up the implementation of solution on the ground and to build a strong multilateral response. Technique, and politics are the two sides of the same coin. In that perspective, I really would like to uh, highlight the midterm review of the water decade in 2023, because it's a crucial step to align member states' commitment with the effective implementation of the fifth pillars of the SDG Global Acceleration Framework. And finally, to take all the necessary measures to achieve a universal and equitable access to water and sanitation and integrated water resources management at all levels, including transboundary one, which is very important for us. In that regard, the initiative of the German government that I warmly congratulate for the success of the Bonn Conference last July 1st is an important milestone towards 2023. In order to keep the dynamic and continue to take effective action in coherence with the UN Global Acceleration Framework, France invites all member states who did not yet rely the political messages virtually submitted in the UN bond to support and appropriate these messages. This will help to bring at the highest level their commitment in favor of the achievement of the 2030 agenda and join the preparatory process of the 2023 conference. The next milestone will be organized in Senegal, in Dakar. It's going to be the World Water Forum. Um, France is a partner of it. And we think it will provide the international community a space to strengthen time and continue to develop and implement integrated approach of the issues and solution needed. So like my Minister of Foreign Affairs said, recalled last uh, July 1st in Bonn, water issues are global and geopolitical and the conference in 2023 must be a new stage in the establishment of effective and inclusive water multilateralism. That's why, and I'm gonna end on this, France is fully committed at the highest level to improve and support cooperation and dialogue of all actors and sectors especially to sustainably manage shared waters 
and to make water a source of peace and security. This objective has been reaffirmed in, the new, um, in our new pluriannual international strategy. So thank you so much and thank you again to you and water. The floor is yours, Anya. Thank you so much for this statement. And indeed, I think the political importance of the 2023 conference on water cannot be overemphasized. It's going to be a real game changer, I think, um, in the political perception, but also in the public perception of the importance of water and the range of solutions that exist if we can only come together to really accelerate water change. I hope you'll agree with me that this afternoon's discussion has been a real eye-opener and, and, and just a fantastic experience to hear from this great range of speakers and um, stakeholders in the water arena. For closing remarks, it's my great pleasure now to invite His Excellency Mr. Munir Akram, the President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, water is vital for the sustenance of life. It is also at the core of sustainable development and pivotal for poverty eradication and economic growth. According to the latest UN report, the current rate of progress on achieving water and sanitation for all must be quadrupled to meet the 2030 deadline. Clearly, our progress towards SDG 6 is significantly off track. The critical importance of water has been highlighted further by the pandemic. Access to safe drinking water, adequate sanitation and hygiene have been the first line of defense against the COVID-19 virus. This is particularly acute for developing countries, especially until the vaccine becomes available to all. Yet, 3 billion people around the world almost 40% of the global population and two out of five healthcare facilities lack adequate access to hand hygiene facilities. The right to safe drinking water was first recognized by the General Assembly and the Human Rights Council as part of international law in 2010. Subsequently, the human rights, human right to sanitation was explicitly recognized as a distinct right by the General Assembly in 2015. This right must be protected universally. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, almost 2.5 billion people, more than a third of the world's population, live in water-scarce regions. By 2050, more than half of the world's population will be at risk due to water stress. Desertification alone threatens the livelihoods of nearly 1 billion people in 100 countries. Intense water scarcity could displace as many as 700 million people by 2030. Over the last 20 years, almost 90% of disasters have been caused by floods, storms, droughts, heat waves, and other weather related events. Worldwide, more than 286 rivers and about 600 aquifers cross southern borders, and 40% of the world's population lives within shared river basins. Without effective transboundary water cooperation, inclusive sustainable development will be severely curtailed, and, the pot and potential threats to peace and security can intensify. Water and climate are tied through the hydrological cycle. Climate change and associated changes in the hydrological cycle will lead to biodiversity loss. It will also adversely impact the provision of water-related ecosystem services, including water purification, as well as the provision of water for drinking, agriculture, and fisheries. 
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, each of the three pillars of sustainable development are inextricably linked to water. Water is essential to the achievement of almost all the SDGs, ranging from food security to global health. The lack of investment in water infrastructure leads to significant economic, social, and environmental losses. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, the total financial needs uh, between 2016 and 2030 for transformation to a water secure world will require additional annual in investments of $500 billion. Global estimates for financing needs range from 6.7 trillion by 2030 to 22.6 trillion dollars by 2050. Investments are needed not only to build new infrastructure, but also to maintain and operate existing facilities. Failure to improve water resource management could diminish national growth rates by as much as 6% of GDP by 2050. Clearly, the current levels of financing are inadequate to reach the international community's goal of universal availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation. While the present sources of international finance and investment are important, governments must explore new and innovative approaches for investment in environmentally sustainable water and sanitation related infrastructure. In this regard, the United Nations can enable and assist developing countries in identifying, formulating, and offering viable projects for water and other infrastructure essential to financing through public and private financing. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, water management is one of the most formidable challenges facing the world, and this challenge has been intensified by the climate crisis. Cooperation is required at all levels to develop a holistic, systemic, and multilateral response to confront and overcome the water challenge. Implementation of the recommendations of the 2018 UN Water SDG 6 Synthesis Report on Water and the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework is critical to this endeavor. I thank you. Thank you to His Excellency, Mr. Akram, President of ECOSOC. Thank you so much to all our participants. There's been such a lively interaction going on on the chat and on the questions and answers. Enormous thanks to our colleagues from the UN Water Secretariat who've been answering your questions on the chat. This session will be available um, in the form of a recording on the UN Water website. And with that, I would like to deeply thank our two eminent co-chairs, Mr. Liu Zhenmin, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and President Umbo, Chair of UN Water. Thank you so much for co-chairing co the session. Thank you to everyone who's participated. And I think you'll agree, this has been a tremendous inspiration for all of us to move upwards and onwards in our actions for water. Thank you and goodbye.